Diabetes mellitus is a disorder in which our body experiences dysfunction of insulin. It can be either the body cannot produce enough insulin or the body does not respond to insulin. There are two subtypes of diabetes mellitus with different mechanisms of occurrence. Due to the differences, we can see different clinical presentations between these two subtypes on individuals affected. In this video, we will be focusing on type 1 diabetes. But before that, in order to understand better, let me introduce to you, pancreas. There are two main functions of pancreas. The first one, pancreas exerts exocrine function to produce enzymes for digestion. The second one, pancreas also exerts endocrine function to release hormones for metabolism. Endocrine is where we want to focus on as type 1 diabetes happens due to the endocrine malfunction in pancreas. Zooming into the pancreas, there is an islet of Langerhans. This islet consists of alpha cell and beta cell. The alpha cell secretes glucagon while the beta cell secretes insulin. Insulin is the main hormone here as it lowers blood sugar level by stimulating the liver to convert glucose to glycogen for storage. Unfortunately, this function is disrupted in people with type 1 diabetes. Firstly, usually individuals with diabetes already have genetic predisposition to the disease. It can be either the mutation in the insulin-dependent diabetes mellitus 1 gene, in short IDDM1, or it can be the mutation in IDDM2 which is the insulin gene, making them more likely to develop diabetes. Then, the presence of environmental triggers such as diet, viruses, toxins, or stress enhance the likelihood of them getting the disease. The combination of both genetic predisposition and environmental triggers will cause the formation of autoantigens on the beta cell. Autoantigens stimulate immune response when being presented to the antigen-presenting cell. This leads to the activation of T-cells and antibodies. These autoantibodies then will attack the beta cells resulting in destruction of beta cells with decreased insulin secretion. Hence, blood glucose level will increase. At the end of 2019, it is reported that there were a total of 1,614,363 patients registered, and 897,421 of them, were diagnosed with active diabetes in the National Diabetes Registry Report. Most of them were diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, and there were 0.62% of patients diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. Based on the data, females are more likely to get diabetes compared to men. In terms of race, Malay has the highest percentage of getting diabetes followed by Chinese, Indian, and others. Several hypotheses are being explored by researchers to explain this immune system disorder. Genetic factors have been identified. Your risk increases if a parent or sibling has type 1 diabetes. Environmental factors such as viruses or chemicals likely play some role in type 1 diabetes. However, to date, no studies are able to confirm these hypotheses. You can get the disease at any age, but it usually develops in children, teens, or young adults. In the context of geography factors, certain countries such as Finland and Sweden have higher rates of type 1 diabetes. In the United States, White people are more likely to develop type 1 diabetes than African American and Hispanic or Latino people. The presence of autoantibodies is also a risk factor. Autoantibodies are those antibodies that mistakenly target and react with a person's own tissues or organs. Sometimes, family members of people with type 1 diabetes are tested for the presence of diabetes autoantibodies. If you have these autoantibodies, you have an increased risk of developing type 1 diabetes. But, not everyone who has these autoantibodies develops it. The exact cause of type 1 diabetes is unknown, however, the factors mentioned may signal an increased risk of developing type 1 diabetes. An individual with type 1 diabetes will experience frequent urination and this condition is known as polyuria. This is due to the reason that our body will produce extra urine to remove the extra blood glucose. With the high urine output, the individual will lose a considerable amount of body fluid, leading to increased thirst and this medical condition is known as polydipsia. Individuals with type 1 diabetes will also experience fatigue and weakness because the blood glucose cannot be taken by the cells to produce energy. 
Along with this clinical presentation is extreme hunger or known as polyphagia due to the reason that the majority of the glucose is removed from the body and none is absorbed by the cells. Besides, individuals with type 1 diabetes will have blurred vision as well. This may be caused by swollen lens or damage to the blood vessels in the retina. Last but not least, bedwetting is common in children with type 1 diabetes too. Patients with type 1 diabetes will experience complications such as heart disease and nerve damage because high blood glucose level will damage both the blood vessels and the nerves. Associated with type 1 diabetes is kidney damage because our nephron is surrounded by a network of blood capillaries and damage to these capillaries will cause this medical condition. Eye damage is one of the complications of type 1 diabetes because the retina in the eye is embedded with blood vessels. Damage to these blood vessels will lead to eye damage or known as diabetic retinopathy. Foot damage is yet another complication in type 1 diabetes due to nerve damage and poor blood flow to the feet in these patients. There are several blood tests that can be done to diagnose type 1 diabetes. The first one is the random blood sugar test. In this test, the blood sample is taken repeatedly at random times. If your random blood sugar level is 11.1 mmol per liter or higher, you may have diabetes. The chance increases if you also have the signs and symptoms. Second one, the fasting blood sugar test. As the name suggests, the blood sample will be taken after an overnight fast which means at least 8 hours with no caloric intake. A fasting blood sugar level from 5.6 to 6.9 mmol per liter is pre-diabetes. Meanwhile, if your fasting blood sugar level is 7 mmol per liter or higher on two separate tests, you have diabetes. Third one, the glycated hemoglobin test. This test measures your blood sugar level for the past two to three months. It measures the percentage of sugar attached to your hemoglobin, which is a protein that carries oxygen in your red blood cells. If your blood sugar level is 6.5% or higher on two separate tests, it indicates that you have diabetes. Currently, there is no cure for type 1 diabetes. However, it can be managed by some pharmacological as well as non-pharmacological management. For pharmacological management, type 1 diabetes patients will usually need lifelong insulin therapy. Insulin is a hormone that aids in the regulation of blood sugar, glucose. It helps the entry of blood sugar into the body's cells, allowing it to be used for energy. Insulin also tells the liver to put blood sugar into storage for later use. There are several types of insulin. First one is rapid acting, which starts to work in about 15 minutes. It peaks about one hour after you take it and continues to work for two to four hours. Second one is short acting, which gets to work in about 30 minutes. It peaks between 2 and 3 hours and keeps working for 3 to 6 hours. Third one is intermediate acting, which won't get into the bloodstream for 2 to 4 hours after your shot. It peaks from 4 to 12 hours and works for 12 to 18 hours. Last one is long acting, which takes several hours to get into your system and lasts about 24 hours. Insulin cannot be taken orally to lower blood sugar because stomach enzymes will break down the insulin, preventing its action. Most insulin comes in a vial, which is a little glass bottle. You will need to use a syringe with a needle on the end to pull it out and give yourself the shot. Some come with pre-filled pens and some by inhalation. You can also obtain it through a pump, which is a device that you wear that delivers it to your body via a little tube. Besides pharmacological management, there is also non-pharmacological management that can be done in order to reduce the symptom of type 1 diabetes. First, exercise. Exercise is essential in the treatment of type 1 diabetes. However, physical exercise reduces blood sugar levels. Therefore, if you start a new activity, check your blood sugar levels more frequently than normal until you understand how the activity affects your blood sugar levels. To compensate for the increased exercise, you may need to change your diet plan or insulin dosage. Next, it is also important to focus your diet on healthy, low-fat, high-fiber meals like fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. 
It is advised that you consume fewer animal products as well as processed carbs such as white bread and sweets.